anatomy of spleen the spleen is the large encapsulated complex mass of uh, vascular and lymphoid tissue situated between the fundus of the stomach and diaphragm so the spleen is located in the left hypochondric region anterior to 9th 10th 11th ribs so here is the lateral view of the thoracic and abdomen region and showing 9th 10th and 11th ribs covering the spleen we know the spleen is now located in the left hypochondric region anterior to 9th 10th 11th ribs which makes it more vulnerable structure during rib fractures so if there are rib fractures the spleen becomes more vulnerable structure due to rib fractures normally spleen does not extend beyond the level of costal margin so we cannot palpate it unless it is in splenomegaly accessory spleens occur in 20% of the population and are commonly located near hilum and tail of pancreas or within the gastrosplenic ligament characteristic features of spleen it is a coffee bean shaped intraperitoneal organ the adult spleen is usually 9 to 14 cm long and 6 to 8 cm wide and 3 to 5 cm thick the average adult weight is depends on the volume of contained blood emptied of blood it weighs between 7 to 120 grams whereas in vivo spleen weight ranges from 150 to 350 grams the spleen has two poles superior and inferior poles and two surfaces diaphragmatic and visceral surface so here is the superior pole inferior pole the diaphragmatic surface in relation to diaphragm and here is the visceral surface this is the left dome of diaphragm so usually the spleen is not palpable as it lies deep in the rib cage but it may be felt in the individuals with slender built or those with splenomegaly so here in this first image we can see the location of spleen so the inferior pole of the spleen it is not been palpable in the first image in lower image we can see due to splenomegaly it becomes palpable so in this image we can see the diaphragmatic surface and this is the visceral surface so the spleen has only a thin capsule and it is well vascularized organ so making it susceptible to injury and rupture especially through trauma uh, to uh, left lower ribs and splenic rupture should therefore uh, always be considered uh, in blunt abdominal injuries let's see the structures related to the spleen the spleen is related to the diaphragm on posterior superior aspect so here is the left dome of diaphragm related to the posterior superior aspect or diaphragmatic surface of spleen and visceral surface is related to the stomach on its anteromedial side the stomach is removed here so here the stomach is related which is called as gastric impression or gastric area and spleen is related to the left kidney on its inferomedial side and also above to the left kidney is the left suprarenal gland
and we can see cut end of stomach to expose the uh, relations of spleen and it is related to left colic flexure on its inferior aspect left colic flexure is otherwise called as splenic flexure because of its relations and spleen is also related to the tail of pancreas at the hilum of the spleen and to remember the dimensions and relations of the spleen the it is easy to remember with a dictum like odd numbers of 135711 means the spleen is 1 inch thick 3 inches in breadth and 5 inches in length and weighs around 7 ounces and lies between 9th and 11th ribs ligaments of spleen the spleen develops between the uh, leaves of dorsal mesogastrium and so it almost entirely invested with visceral peritoneum so that is firmly adherent to the capsule so gastrosplenic ligament it is the fold of peritoneum that extends from the greater curvature of the stomach to the splenic hilum and contains short gastric vessels so here is the cut end of stomach greater curvature of stomach and we can see gastro splenic ligament which contains short gastric vessels and it connects the spleen to the greater curvature of the stomach and ligament contains the short gastric vessels and also gastroepiploic vessels and it separates the greater sac and the lesser sac so the next regarding the spleno renal ligament or leno renal ligament spleno renal uh, ligament contains splenic artery splenic vein and tail of pancreas so we can see the tail of pancreas here ending near the hilum and this is the splenic artery and splenic vein which are the contents of spleno renal ligament so here is the left kidney forms the spleno renal ligament which contains the splenic artery splenic vein and tail of pancreas the only intraperitoneal part of the pancreas is located within this ligament anterior end of the spleen is held up by phrenico colic ligament so phrenico colic ligament connects with the uh, diaphragm and the colon so we can see the anterior end or the inferior pole of the spleen it is connected to the splenic flexure of colon by means of phrenico colic ligament so this phrenico colic ligament helps the spleen from anterior end and phrenico splenic ligament it runs between the spleen and the peritoneum of under surface of diaphragm so between the spleen and the peritoneal reflection of the diaphragm is called as phrenico splenic ligament so let's talk about the functions of spleen so hematological and immunological functions like hemopoiesis maturation of blood elements immunoglobulin activation recirculation of t and b lymphocytes production production of uh, leukocytes peptides immunoglobulins that is igm mainly and opsonins and tuftsin and properdin and it also helps in production of some factors like complement factors and stem cells and spleen is a storage organ for leukocytes platelets and all metals and it is a clearance organ where it removes the microorganisms parasites circulating antigens and altered circulating cells and circulating foreign bodies and even the senile rbcs synthesis and metabolism spleen is a important precursor of hepatic functions 
and it also helps in the metabolism of lipids, cholesterol, bilirubin, amino acids. And spleen controls the bone marrow, mononuclear phagocytic function and also somatic growth. Blood supply of the spleen. So the main arterial supply is by the splenic artery, the largest branch of celiac trunk. So here is the celiac trunk. Celiac trunk arises from the abdominal iota. So we can see this tortuous artery is the splenic artery. So splenic artery is the largest branch of celiac trunk and has a tortuous course. And it runs uh, along the superior border of pancreas to reach the hilum of spleen where it branches into central and pencilar arterioles and gives vascular supply to the organ. Branches of splenic arteries, so not only it supplies the spleen, it supplies the stomach by short gastric arteries, left gastroepiplaic artery. And the splenic artery supplies the pancreas by means of dorsal pancreatic branch and great pancreatic branches of splenic artery. And it also gives rise to few caudal pancreatic arteries and end with finally about 5 terminal branches. So it finally ends with 5 terminal branches which are near the hilum of the spleen. So the 5 terminal branches of the splenic artery are clinically important because they supply the individual segments of the spleen with no anastomosis between them. So they are the end arteries so that the obstruction or ligation of any terminal branch will result in a splenic infarction. That is, spleen is very prone to infarction. Next, regarding the venous drainage, the splenic vein. Splenic vein is uh, the vein which is along with the splenic artery and the blood from the parenchyma of the spleen is collected by the trabecular veins and they join to form segmental veins and the drain the individual splenic segments. So segmental veins join to form two superior and inferior or three superior, middle and inferior which are called as lobar veins. So segmental veins they will join to form two veins they are superior and inferior or they may join to form three veins which are superior, middle and inferior lobar veins. And that emerge from the length of the splenic hilum and in, unite to form a splenic vein within the splenorenal ligament. And at the hilum of the spleen, the splenic vein meets the superior mesenteric vein to form the portal vein. So we can see at the neck of the pancreas, we can see posterior to the neck of the pancreas, the splenic vein is here. which is draining the spleen and here is the superior mesenteric vein and these two joints to form portal vein. So the veins that empty into the splenic vein are short gastric veins which are draining the posterior wall of the stomach and also the left gastroepiploic vein, pancreatic veins mainly from the body and tail of pancreas and inferior mesenteric vein. Splenic vein thrombosis is most commonly associated with pancreatitis and shows a clinical signs like gastric varices and upper gastrointestinal bleeding. Now we shall talk about the lymphatics of spleen. The lymphatic drainage of the spleen begins in the white pulp. So the lymphatics travel with the blood vessels towards the lymphatic subcapsular plexus which drain via the larger lymphatic channels to lymph nodes at the splenic hilum and around the tail of pancreas. So we can see the lymph nodes in the splenic hilum. Lymph nodes at splenic hilum and around the tail of pancreas. So from here the lymph drains into suprapancreatic and infrapancreatic lymph nodes. From here we can see the lymph nodes are 
supra pancreatic and here are infra pancreatic and also drains into omental lymph nodes which are on the posterior side of the stomach so omental lymph nodes and finally they drain into celiac nodes and cisterna chile so here are the celiac nodes this is the supra pancreatic nodes here is the celiac node which is near the celiac trunk so all the lymphatics drain finally into the celiac nodes and from the celiac nodes the lymph is drained into cisterna chile and which continues above as thoracic duct innervation of the spleen the spleen is innervated by both the components of autonomic nervous system that is the sympathetic supply is dominant and spleen receives post ganglionic sympathetic fibers from celiac plexus so celiac plexus are around the celiac artery and parasympathetic nerves from vagal trunks so parasympathetic nerves is by vagal trunks and sympathetic fibers innervates the arteries at least uh, to the trabecular level and have major influence on the blood flow within the spleen the capsule and parenchyma are innervated by sensory fibers that convey pain referred pain from the splenic pulp is poorly localized to the epigastrium Microscopic anatomy of the spleen the spleen is made up of red pulp and white pulp separated by marginal zone so red pulp is composed of splenic cords and sinuses so splenic cords composed of reticular meshwork filled with the blood which is an open circulation system and that filters the blood from the damaged erythrocytes splenic sinusoids consists of long vessels with a fenestrated ring like or barrel hoop near the basement membrane that prevent old or malformed rbcs or platelets from re-entering the venous circulation so what is this open circulation so blood empties from the sheathed capillaries into the splenic cords and then enters the sinusoids through slits in in the vessel wall and what is the closed circulation the blood empties from the sheathed capillaries of red pulp and directly into the sinusoids is considered as closed circulation so spleen is containing both open and closed circulation as well macrophages which are found in the cords and around the sinusoids of spleen macrophages do the sign phagocytosis so phagocytosis of damaged rbcs platelets that do not re-enter the circulation so the iron produced by this degradation is stored by the macrophages and returned to the bone marrow meanwhile the toxic bilirubin is excreted into the liver the capture of viruses and obscenized pathogens that enter the red pulp is also done by spleen so let us understand the blood flow inside the spleen so we know the arterial supply is by the splenic artery so here we can see the splenic artery splenic artery divides to form arterioles and these arterioles end up in the red pulp and from the red pulp the blood flows into cords or sinusoids from the red pulp uh, the blood flows into the cords and sinusoids and from the sinusoids it is connected by the venules and from the venules the blood is drained via the splenic vein into portal circulation white pulp periarteriolar 
lymphatic sheath which is shortly called as pulse is called as the white pulp which surrounds the arterioles so around the arterioles we see the white pulp so white pulp composed of dense lymphoid tissue mainly containing t lymphocyte follicles that is the lymphatic follicles the main components of white pulp are the lymphatic follicles and which are in close association with arteriolar lymphatic sheath and contains b lymphocytes marginal zone marginal zone is located between the red pulp and white pulp contains the antigen presenting cells like macrophages and specialized b cells which are called as marginal zone b cells let's see some associated clinical aspects of spleen splenic rupture because of spleen has such an extremely thin capsule it is susceptible to injury even when there is no damage to surrounding structures and because of the spleen is highly vascular when ruptured it bleeds profusely into the peritoneal cavity so splenic rupture should always be suspected with blunt abdominal injury current treatments uh, preserve as much as the spleen as possible but some patients require splenectomy so this completes the normal anatomy and clinical aspects of spleen thank you